That's the, <coughs> the opener. Okay, so I'll call the meeting to order. First thing is approval of the minutes, June 5 and 14th. I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes of uh, both June 5th and June 14th. I second that motion. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, second is uh, addition to the agenda. I have five additions. Uh, first is deep grants. Second is union negotiations. Third is uh, Northwest Connect. Fourth is road paving bids. Fifth is um, the emergency management exercise tomorrow at um, tomorrow. So are there any other additions? I'll second that we add, add those. those. Yeah. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Public comment? Public? Everybody Communic happy? Everybody happy? Communications, yeah. Communications. Public comments? Okay, <clears throat> first up then is um, loader bids. We had a bid opening today. We sent it out, sent bid outs to buy a, um, a four wheeled uh, payloader. Uh, we got two bids back from uh, W.I. Clark and Tyler Equipment. Uh, W.I. Clark is a John Deere dealer and uh, Tyler is a uh, Volvo dealer. They came in with equivalent um, equivalent machines in some ways. Uh, Jim has uh, tested both and has recommended um, W.I. Clark John Deere which is also the lower of the two bids. Uh, the John Deere uh, came in at $179,000 but gave us generous uh, trade-ins for our current uh, um, loader of $35,000 and $7,500 for our current grader. So if you add, uh, if you subtract those two trade-ins, the purchase price comes in at $136,750 six dollars um, Jim would like to go with a extended warranty the current warranty is uh, for one year and for fifteen hundred dollars we could extend that to three years and Thank that would be on the drivetrain engine everything yeah. complete oh that sounds like a good deal though. right for fifteen hundred dollars so yeah. the total price of that one with the extended warranty would then be one hundred and thirty eight thousand two sixty five um, and the good thing about that is that we have $175,000 in our account for this machine. Oh, great. So if we needed to buy something else, we have money left over. Uh, the the um, Tyler uh, gave us less for the trade-ins. It's actually less on the machine. Um, but uh, the Volvo uh, total price with the extended warranty and the trade-ins would be $147,400. So it would be about $9,000 yeah. more than the machine that Jim likes. This is also the machine that is awarded the state contract bid. So for all those reasons, um, I would move that we buy a, um, let's see, a, a 624K H four wheel drive loader, John Deere loader, uh, with an extended warranty for $138,265. Does this have to go before, if we approve this, do we then go to the finance committee no, with this? No, we're all oh. good to go. I second. Okay. Because this was in the... This uh, is in the budget proposal in the five-year plan. Right. We've allocated money for two years to get this 
and the last one I think is 15, 16 years old. Uh, so it's good. This one's a little bigger. Now this is this a new done. machine? Brand new, yeah. Wow, okay. So that's good. So any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, next we have Bridges, um, and um, we did vote last week to award the bridge contract to Dayton Construction. They were low bidder on both the Smith Place and the Gravel Bank Bridge. Uh, we have gotten Board of Pr Finance approval on these projects, and uh, Roger Kane and Dave Batista, our town engineer, said these are uh, good, it's a good company, and these are in budget also for what we had thought they'd be. So we're just, we've already voted to accept this and we'll put the award letter out. Uh, Roger's gonna proofread it, make sure we have the right terminology. Um, and then um, we'll get that uh, letter out probably tomorrow and we are working on getting the uh, temporary access agreements from the abutting landowners. So that's should be shouldn't be a problem with that. It will cost us a little bit in legal fees to draw up all the pro appropriate documents, but I think they're all on board. So just getting everything lined up. Uh, let's see. The big big news of the day was um, the uh, pieces of the dock for Hammond Beach have been delivered from New Hampshire. Um, did work with Talk to Marina, and again, the Board of Finance approved this proposal. We are going a bit over the budget because we have to buy kickboards. We looked at the, the boards they use right now, and they look like it would be better to use the ones that come with this system than try to retrofit something onto it. So. We'll have to do a budget transfer, but there is uh, money left over from building the playground <coughs> at the school years ago that we can tap into, so I don't think we'll, it shouldn't be a major Will overage. they be in place by the beach opening this Friday? They're putting Great. pieces together on Thursday, I think. Great. So it's well, that's good news. It's basically a lot of pieces, uh, flotation pieces that are five by 10. The ramp out there will be a little bigger than we've had before but also a little more stable. And I think an installer is coming down and Ronnie Lozano has been great, the local contractor who's been overseeing this and doing a lot of research. And the town crew went up there and unloaded it. And it's, uh, there's a lot of, it looks like uh, uh, building blocks back in kindergarten, I mean, but they're big, they're five by 10 feet. They're so heavy or light? They're light. They're also um, tan color. So they don't heat up, because I told the salesman sunbathing was very important. So they don't heat up as much as a, as a gray dock does. So we'll see how it all goes, but it should be fairly, it would take a while, but it should be fairly easy to install. And if we need to expand it, we can expand it. And Jack Preston, uh, long time Cornwall, good citizen noticed there were no docks at the town beach and offered a small dock if we needed it in a pinch and we don't have a, an extra dock out there so we might take Jack up on his offer of temporary use of his dock. We need an extra dock. So so it should be good. Should be in place. A lot of beach passes going out the door. People are looking forward to jumping in the lake. So that should come up and we will need to remind ourselves at the Board of Finance meeting they thought it was a good idea if we put a little plaque up at the beach house that the, the docks were purchased with um, money from the town received from the uh, Larry and Judy Gates bequest. So we'll give them full credit um, and uh, for being very generous to the town and their generosity continues by getting us a really nice dock system. So that's going along. Um, anything else on that? So I talked to Marina, so she's ready to go. A couple of uh, new programs at the beach this summer, some entertainment, some uh, music, I think. Uh, coming up, music and paddleboard yoga classes will be offered. So um, 
Next thing is the bend. Um, it's on deck for planning and zoning uh, next month, I think July. I want to say July 12th, although I'm not quite sure that's the right date. But whatever the regular planning and zoning meeting is, they will go with that. They've applied in the wetlands. Um, and so I would hope that we would be able, by this time next month, to set a town meeting in August to bring it to the voters in August um, to get their input on this project. Um, we do have a license agreement that, did I send you a copy of that? Yes. Right, so that once we finalize that, we'll have that on display. And I've asked Pearlie to write up a town meeting call so we, we have the proper language for voters to vote on. Do you have any comments on the license? <clears throat> and there, the, what would be going before the town at a town meeting is an, appro an approval of the lease agreement? Yeah, the license agreement the or license the town agreement. taking over maintenance of that area for a period of time. Oh uh, yeah, the, <coughs> we got this late today. Right. Um, so it wasn't... <coughs> Um, we need a map, but it's basically, what's important too is that this would give the town license over their whole three acre piece there, which includes the land adjacent <coughs> to the library. So basically, the map is uh, their holdings in West Cornwall. I mean, it is interesting, it, it, it gives either party a right to step away, right. if they so choose. Yeah. Really, with no, with no reason, right. to step away. And if there are certain things that the town does incorrectly, then that, that gives them total right to do it. Right. To uh, end the agreement. I like the uh, termination. The date is recorded without the written consent of the le uh, licensor. <laughs> right. So anyway, Pearlie's looking at this. So. I thought what we'd do is we'll have to have, um, oh, let's see, for this, he's looking at this, and again, this probably is going to be in August because they're still in front of other commissions, but again, if we get something going in August, that gives HVA August, September to construct, which again puts pushing the season, but there's not a, a lot of work to be done. Well, it probably could be the dry season for them to be doing right. it, wouldn't it? I mean, isn't that yeah, the so they would want to be the doing? goal would be to get something early August, I would think, um, approved. Okay, any other th and let me know, because we, again, we don't have to sign off on this tonight, but it's gotten farther than we have in the past. Uh, any other thoughts on the bend? Um, it next, ha it may actually happen. It may actually happen, or at least it will come to a vote. Uh, next is the Lord's farm, farm lease. Uh, we have been in contact with uh, Jeff Castle, who is a young farmer that actually worked at Stonewall Dairy for a period of time, and now has a, works on a dairy up in uh, Massachusetts. And he and his wife. The young family are in the process of purchasing Stonewall Dairy from Chris Hopkins, who has had it for a number of years. Uh, it's a former Lorch farm in Cornwall Bridge on Route 7, purveyors of high quality raw milk. And so they are working through all this. They have a financing company called Dirt Capital that is helping them uh, afford this. And uh, we have a revision of the lease that, that the town has had with Chris Hopkins. Uh, their lawyer has changed it uh, several places, but not substantially other than uh, they want to have a 30-year lease, which is probably going to outlast most of us, but they're young, and to make this kind of commitment, it's very important for them to know that this land will be available um, because it's about 100 acres the town owns. The town was given through a um, fundraising drive. And in order for that farm to be viable, especially as a dairy, they need all the town land mm -hmm. or 
almost all the town land is integral to it. That's one of the reasons the townspeople gave money was to see it remain a viable working farm as opposed to a well manicured estate. Um, so it will continue to be a dairy farm. Correct. Yeah. And so uh, Jeff is interested in getting this done, you know, with any property transfer. As you well know, it takes a period of time. But um, I talked to Pearlie, and I, I don't think we have a problem. There's a few issues that Pearlie brought up, uh, mostly uh, grammatical things uh, as far as being fine. They may, not, they may not close by the time we have the town meeting. But we can make our our assigning the lease effective upon uh, them closing their per their lease purchase agreement on the rest of the farm. So, say something happens and it falls apart at the last minute, it still stays with Chris Hopkins, who's mm -hmm. managed the land well for a number of years. But at least this gets this piece out of the way, like any other mm -hmm. complicated thing. It's what it, you take off the pieces as you can. Um, and we won't, as I said, we'll probably wait for another couple of weeks to actually set, you know, sign off on a town meeting. But as it's in July, uh, I'd like to get something in the Chronicle. And the young farmer said he'd come down, introduce himself to the community. It's a good public relations thing. Are we talking about having one town meeting with both of those events? No, I'm talking about getting this done in, in July. So two town meetings. Two town meetings, one in July, one in August, because... We also have Hard Hill Road that's out there. Right. Um, we have some budget transfers that probably will happen in August. In and again, just the bend itself may take a town meeting. I mean, an hour of concentrated debate. So in this, who knows? So I, I think it's better to get things done for his sake. And again, attracting young people in town is one of our top priorities. So we're going to mm -hmm. keep pushing things forward to make that happen. So I think it's very positive. Um, again, he has a support group behind him. This capital group doesn't just give money, but they work on farm planning, financing, setting benchmark goals to make sure his business succeeds, gives him, you know, agricultural advice on marketing. So it's a really nice organization. It's one of the first times they've, they've been busy in the Hudson Valley and Mohawk Valley, this is their, one of their first moves into Connecticut, but I think it's, again, it's getting access to agricultural land is difficult for young farmers, and this could be a really good thing for the town for a long period of time, so. So I think it's all good. We did, there's a re reservation there for a community garden or public use of some acreage, and that's near the Route 7 Road, and that would stay the same. So there are some people that are interested in growing, having their own little plots there. So that would be good. So again, we we'll just put that out there that we'll work on this lease, probably um, set a town meeting uh, sign off. Hopefully at our meeting, we probably have a special meeting to do the union contracts next week. And if we can get a town meeting notice, then it would be good. Uh, Jeff said he'd prefer to do it on the 10th of July, which is soon, but there would be an article in the Chronicle by then, and that'd be a Tuesday night, because weekends on the summer tend to be fairly busy. Is there still time to get something in the July Chronicle? Yes. They haven't come in. Because this is yeah. late. Usually they want it by the middle of the month. Yeah, it's funny. They haven't. It's getting a little tight. They haven't come by to say hi. Well, you better right? check on that, because usually I was yeah. thinking it was by the 16th or 17th, yeah. and today's, what, the 19th? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true. It's All right. Give my heads up. We got something. Yeah. Else. Yeah. All right, so let's, uh, I'll call them up. Let's schedule that for um, the 10th of July. Call up the editors. That's a Tuesday. So our next meeting is July 3rd? 3rd, but we're going to probably have to have another. We have a union negotiating session on the 28th, right. which is next week. So, we'll see. So 
Okay, so then there's a mo- is there a motion to take the Lord's farm lease to a town meeting on July 10th? Second that. Did you just make the motion? Yes. I'll second it. Is there enough time to pull that off? Sure. What is that to be advertised in the paper five days ahead of time? Mm-hmm. Right. You got July yeah, 4th. As far as the legal, you're far, fine. Just right. whether or not you can get it in the Chronicle. But we'll find out tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, next is Hard Hill Road. And all in favor? All in favor? Aye. 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 Hard Hill Road. Um, Jim and I met up at the end of Hard Hill Road with the landowners who want to acquire the end of Hard Hill Road for the garage plans. Um, met with the engineer, site designer, so they are going to get us some topographic maps laid out, mm-hmm. points where this would actually happen. So I don't see any problems there. We had a good meeting about where we put the snow, how we turn the trucks around, and all that stuff. So their engineer, I think, will pull something together for our approval, and then we can get that to a town meeting. And that goes to a town meeting, too? Yes. So that should be the July one as well? No, no I think no? it would be too quick. Oh. We have to see the maps and stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we, I, and he may not have those plans by next week, so. He's got to make the maps, then. Yeah. Uh, next is uh, Sustainable Connecticut. I attended a meeting over the COG office. There's five towns in the area, including Cornwall, um, or who else was there, Roxbury, Torrington, Burlington, Barkhampstead are involved with Sustainable Connecticut. This is program Cape Frygang is, has uh, promoted to encourage environmental uh, activities in towns and recognize the towns that have done a lot. So we are going to do an inventory. The COC has an has a intern who's working on a list. And so we are doing an inventory of town activities and see how it all sits. So that, that's just a summer project that will be ongoing. Um, next is uh, Steve Krantz. Uh, Joyce and I have been working hard to talk to uh, <coughs> the State Department of uh, Economic Development and we did hear that we will get an extension on our Steve Grant through December of 2019. Oh, so we've been filing the necessary paperwork and as soon as we get the signed copies, we'll publicize that more. So there will be a Steve Grant. There's a couple of programs, uh, projects already in the uh, works and we'll sit down. We have a $120,000 grant. We've spent approximately $30,000 approving seven business facades in Cornwall. And uh, there's room for more work more grants so uh, we hope to get more information on that soon get the signatories signatures going um, next we have a union meeting a negotiating meeting um, that's on the 20 scheduled for the 28th was the best day for him at 10 o'clock does that interfere with your um, your open housing no but I wrote it in and good so I, I, think I told we'll Joyce do when she called me that it was fine, I would work it. Right. We may, I think we should meet like half an hour ahead of time. This is generally just... So 9.30 instead 9:30. of 10? Right. And I'll make up some proposals for our negotiations. And which unions is this? This is the Highway Union, which has... Highway Union. Three members. Yeah. So we have a three-year contract and we negotiate it um, okay. in terms of insurance cost of living increase, conditions of work, and again, the, we won't, it usually takes a couple of sessions to get things. And that's here? That's here, to get things finalized, but we've had a, a good um, negotiating history with our local union. And How many union members are there? three. Three, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> and you're going to add a few other things possibly to that yeah. uh, agenda uh, right. as we may need. Right, probably uh, the town meeting call thing. Um, next, um, at the COG, Northwest COG meeting, um, there was a presentation from Kim Maxwell, 
who's president of Northwest Connects. And he gave us a report in two parts. And one was, uh, his, the big news there was there's a thing called Pur Pura, which is a public utility regulatory agency, and they regulate such things as cell tower, no, as um, they regulate uh, public utilities such as the power companies and the telephone companies and the cable companies. They don't deal with the signing of towers, it's a separate group. So they made a decision, controversial, that said that there was this thing called municipal gain, which was that town municipalities had the right to put one spot, one cable up on telephone poles and have had it for years. But apparently as there's more wire going up, these spots are more and more valuable. So the state in, a, in its infinite wisdom took away the municipal gain and made, made some people that want to see increased broadband service go pretty well um, into orbit. So uh, the Connecticut Council of Municipalities has filed an appeal um, and they're trying to do all that. Um, so anyway, they may have to get a legislative solution to this in the next session. Uh, so there's some information on that and they thought it would take um, two to three years to get up to the Connecticut Supreme Court. So that's a bit of a setback to their plans, but they are continuing to uh, plan ahead on how they can spread fiber to the Northwest Hills. And their immediate task, which I will unfairly hand, hand off to Priscilla as she is our, <laughs> our um, Thank you. internet broadband liaison, person, they wanted us to uh, go around town with a um, cell phone and find dead spots. A cell phone? To find dead spots. Where is there oh. no coverage? <laughs> Everywhere. Well, <laughs> no. I mean, there's better, there's places that are better than others. Like mm -hmm. at our house, if you can see the tower in Sharon, we get decent reception as long as you don't go over the hill a little bit. So there are places, and we have people that stop on Town Street just because it's good reception. I mean, there's good reception in, um, you get some reception in parts of West Cornwall. Right here is pretty dead. And also, even though the tower from Mohawk, ski area is pretty dead. So the ones I know about that are really bad is generally this area because it's blocked by the hills. Cornwall Village is worse than probably Cornwall Bridge or West Cornwall. And those are marginal. But there are some hilltops that are actually, I would say, good. Uh, Woodruff for, Lane is wonderful. Woodruff Lane is fine. <laughs> good. Uh, Route 45, I've heard, is a dead zone. Uh, Cornwall Hollow, a lot of Route four, 63 is a dead zone. Route 4, going down to Cornwall Bridge, is a dead zone. And going up this way. Going up this way is dead. dead zone. So 40, 43 is not very good either, is it? 43 is not very good. Mm -hmm. But you can get you you can get some at the four corners because you can get off the Mohawk Tower. Right. But as soon as you get farther up 43 to Cornwall Hollow is bad. So if you wouldn't mind just taking that on. Oh, I'll be glad to do that. That'd be good. I mean, I think most, you know, just even calling people in the corners, but I've heard that 45, parts of Route 4, um, and Cornwall Hollow is really bad. Most of West Cornwall is dreadful because we're too low. They've got too that low. wonderful thing on Route 7. Right. But like River Road, if you go where it becomes dirt, just past the O'Neill's house and pull yeah. over, there you can get I a do. signal. I get it. I get in my fields there. <laughs> I can, I can, yeah. I'm on your touch. fields you get it. You yeah. do, because you can pick up that tower. But where its road but, is paved down by us, right. no. Nothing. Really? Nothing, Nothing. right there. I'm hmm. trying to sell the lot next to Whitney's old house. Yeah. And I was showing it to a lady in February. She said, I need cell service. I said, not here. But if you drive a quarter of a mile down the road, go across right. the railroad track and turn into the dirt road. She said, how do you know that I still live here? There you go. <laughs> That's a perfect person for the job. 
Um, <laughs> Thanks. So, what else did we talk about? Um, talked about that. Um, oh, they are um, they are looking at uh, revising uh, the regional safety plan, and they're looking at especially Route 7, Route 45, where they've had a lot of accidents. Uh, they did, the COG did pass a, um, pass and approve a grant application by Hustock Railroad to replace all the ties in their tracks, which I think is good because it hopefully keep, keep the trains on the tracks. So, um, I did ask them about the dead trees in West Cornwall. Oh, they're terrible. And they're getting worse and their representatives of the DOT and the DEP said, they did not kill the trees. That's what we have well, people that feel differently. <laughs> so anyway, we are they still kill the trees. Discussing, discussing that, but hopefully they will. The rail does, they said a lot of the rail is over 100 years old. Mm -hmm. and, th and this would just replace the ties. I said, well, why don't you go for the whole thing? Because the rails are, are coming to a crack. So anyway, whatever. So they are going to try to get some upgrade. But again, that's a competitive grant. And uh, we'll see where we where it goes. Um, so speaking of infrastructure, Jim has a paving bids ready to go uh, to pave, um, do some paving in town, and he is looking for um, do some work on Allen Road, uh, Ballyhack Road, and I think. Not sure where else. Yeah, Mohawk Mountain Road and Valley Hack will be the only major roads that he's doing. But those would um, Valley Hack is dirt and it washes out a lot, and Mohawk is paved, but it's all broken up, so they have to reclaim that. Gordon, I think he should repay his own parking lot. I yeah. go to the dump three times a week, yeah. and it's dreadful going into the dump. I mean, that is a it's lot It's tough. Of the only problem, I mean, they, yeah, they'll pitch some of the holes. The only problem is people fly through there. So we have a bad, the, the bad situation is, see, they're backing their trucks out and people come flying in the driveway. So they said, if you pave it, it will increase the speed is the reason why they haven't done it. So it's tough, but again, there, there could be something worse. And we do have a problem with people tearing right through there when it's, you know, a work area. But I will pass. So that's my on. two cents. Two cents. All it's good to have two cents. So he's talking about reclaiming Allen Road? Yeah. Um, and paving how much of the dirt on Valley Island? All of it. All the way down to the turn Yeah. Because yep. it's paved for the first, the first minute, little bit. Four or five hundred feet? So yeah. A couple hundred feet. So let's see, so that's paving, <clears throat> and then tomorrow we have the drill. Did you get the email from Terry Burke? Yeah. yeah. Right, so there is a drill tomorrow starting at 8 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. The West Coral Firehouse going to 2. We're probably not going to stay there to 2, but it will be interesting to see who comes. And if you come for part of that, we're probably going to be there from like 8 to 10. So, and just to see how emergency management works between the emergency manager people, the fire department, um, some of the CERT people will be there. And the state basically does a, a um, role-playing thing where they give you these um, updates of a crisis that's happening. They're having some sort of major flood in New England is going to be our scenario. So we can come for a short time? Absolutely. Just to say, it's mostly just to see who's there okay. and what they're doing, and even if you stay for 15 minutes. In the last couple <laughs> of years, I've gotten there, I don't know, 8.30 or something to stay for right. 30 minutes, 45 well, I'm minutes. I'm shooting a video at 9.45, so I can right. come up before that. Yeah. yeah, bring your video. No, no, it's a real estate thing. I don't want to <laughs> <laughs> Come to Cornwall, where we're, we're, we're prepared. We may not have cell service, but we're prepared. So, um, yeah, so anyway, that, that'll okay. be happening. It'll be good just to, Terry's been working hard. It'll be good just to give him encouragement. And I think that's all the additions. Any public comments? I do. Okay, from the press. I do. From the real press. The name of that John Deere dealer that you're buying.
W I Clark. W I. W I Clark and W I Clark. C L A R K. Yes, and they are in Wallingford. Right. And then the name of the construction company, Davey, D-A-V-E. Uh, Dayton. 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 And they're in Watertown, Connecticut. Alan Dayton is the president. D-A-Y-T-O-N. Yes. And they recently did a, a bridge job for the state here on Route 4. Did a very nice construction job. And how do we spell Alan? Uh, I think the usual way. A-L-A-N. A-L-A-N. I think. Mm. Close enough? I don't, I don't. Good chance. Anything else? Nothing. Okay. Well, thanks for coming. Yes, thank you very much. It's good to right. see you. Right. And thank you, Richard. Yes, you are. Putting it out there. Right.